The Major League Baseball Draft. Since 1965, it's been one of the primary ways to add players to an organization and secures young talent for a significant number of years at well below market rates. It's not as big of a media event as other major sports leagues because players don't really provide an impact until years down the line. And you can't really assess the success of a draft until possibly a whole decade later. And that's something I haven't really seen in major sports media. Because of this, we're going to take a look back at some past drafts and see what teams and what years come out on top as some of the best drafts in league history. So in putting this list together, it became difficult to whittle down to one way to analyze a draft class. So I ended up using three different ways and creating three different lists. If you want to look at all the data I compiled and see more than just the top 10 lists, I included a link down in the description of the video to a Google spreadsheet that includes every draft class from every team back to 1965. The three different rankings in this video are wins above replacement for all players drafted for their entire career, wins above replacement for all players drafted while playing for the team that drafted them, and wins above replacement for all players drafted during their first six years of MLB service time. We will also only include players that signed. For instance, Roger Clemens counts towards the 1983 Boston Red Sox draft, not the 1981 New York Mets draft and also only including players with positive career war. I would consider a draft pick that ends up making the majors but performs poorly to still be a better draft pick than a player that never even comes close to reaching the majors, so I don't want to penalize teams for that. First, we'll be looking at the sum of the wins above replacement of the players picked by any team. Coming in at number 10, the 1978 Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles struck gold in the second round when they drafted Cal Ripken Jr. with the 48th overall pick. Ripken broke the mold of shortstops at the time. When he was drafted, most shortstops were six feet tall or shorter, were defensive-minded, and didn't have very much offensive prowess. Ripken came in at six foot four, 225 pounds, and immediately became one of the best offensive shortstops in the league. He was nicknamed the Iron Man due to setting the record for consecutive games played at 2,632, surpassing Luke Gehrig's streak of 2,130. He had a 21-year career, all with the Baltimore Orioles, and in 1997, he became a first ballot Hall of Famer. The Orioles also drafted Mike Bodiger in the sixth round. He was a very productive starting pitcher for 14 years in the league, including in 1984 where he was an all-star, finished fourth in the Cy Young, and 25th in MVP voting. Number nine is the 1990 New York Yankees. This draft was anchored by the trio of Carl Everett, Jorge Posada, and Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit holds the record for career postseason wins with 19. He's also one of only two pitchers to have started games across 10 seasons and never had a losing record. Surprisingly, the other is Babe Ruth. Among Yankees pitchers, Pettit ranks first in strikeouts, third in wins, and tied for first in games started. His number was retired by the Yankees in 2015. Jorge Posada was a mainstay in the Yankees lineup for 17 seasons. He's also the only MLB catcher in history to ever bat 330 or better with 40 doubles, 20 home runs, and 90 RBIs in a single season. Carl Everett was an outfielder and switch hitter that played for eight teams over the course of 14 years. He's probably most known for his outspoken beliefs, such as dinosaurs don't exist, fossils of dinosaur bones are man-made fakes, and question the validity of the Apollo moon landing. Pettit, Posada, and Everett have combined for 10 All-Star appearances and own 10 World Series rings. Number 8 is the 1999 St. Louis Cardinals. The highlight of this draft is obviously Albert Pujols, who is one of the most productive first basemen of the 2000s. While the last decade hasn't been too kind to him, his run from 2001 to 2011 was one of the best offensive starts to a career. This 11-year stretch saw him hit 445 home runs, bat 328, and have an OPS Plus of 170, along with winning Rookie of the Year and three MVP awards. Currently is on the Dodgers and closing in on being only the fourth player to reach 700 home runs. The Cardinals also drafted Coco Crisp. The speedy center fielder was traded to Cleveland prior to his rookie year and ended up playing 15 years in the league across four teams. He led the league in stolen bases in 2011 with 49 and had over 300 stolen bases in his career. Number seven is the 1976 Boston Red Sox. In this draft, the Red Sox got Wade Boggs, 12-time All-Star, 2-time Gold Glove, 5-times batting title, 
Hall of Famer, and legendary drinker. May he rest in peace. Wade Boggs is very much alive. I stand corrected. Because of that, he has the highest career batting average of any living player, and was the 23rd player to enter the 3,000 hit club. Boggs had a crazy start to his career where five of his first seven seasons he hit over 350, and the first 10 years of his career were all over 300. Bruce Hurst played for 15 years and pitched brilliantly in the 1986 World Series. In Game 6 with Boston winning 5-3 in the 10th inning, he was preemptively selected as the MVP of the series, only for the Mets to come back, win Game 6, win Game 7, and Ray Knight instead was named MVP. At number 6, we stay in 1976 with the Detroit Tigers. In this draft, the Tigers got Alan Trammell, a shortstop that spent all 20 years of his career with Detroit. He was a six-time All-Star, four-time Gold Glove winner, three-time Silver Slugger, and the 1984 World Series MVP. The Tigers won the 1984 World Series on the strength of Trammell and fellow draftee Jack Morris. Morris spent 14 years of his 18-year career with the Tigers, making five All-Star teams in the process. At the tail end of his career, he was on three World Series winning teams in a row, the 1991 Twins and the 1992 and 1993 Toronto Blue Jays. Both Morris and Trammell were elected to the Hall of Fame by the Modern Baseball Committee in 2017 and were inducted together in July of 2018. Dan Petrie was an All-Star in 1985 and currently is the TV color commentator for the Detroit Tigers. At number 5, we go back to Boston with the 1983 Red Sox. The only major hit in this draft was Roger Clemens. And you may say, well the Tigers had two Hall of Famers and a third pretty solid player. Clemens was that good that his wins above replacement alone was higher than that entire draft by the Tigers. He played for four different teams, was an 11-time All-Star, a 7-time ERA title winner, 2-time Triple Crown winner, and MVP winner as a pitcher. Now as of right now, he isn't in the Hall of Fame, but putting aside the steroids and looking just at his stat sheet and accolades, he goes down as one of the best pitchers in the history of the game. Number 4 is the 1965 Kansas City Athletics. This draft class really stands out from the others on the list because there's no Hall of Famers, no Cy Young Award winners, no MVP winners, just three position players with very long and healthy careers. Sal Bando, Gene Tennants, and Rick Monday combined for 50 years in the league. Sal Bando was the most impressive out of the draft. Over a six-year stretch from 1969 to 1974, he received MVP votes each season, as well as attended four All-Star games. Bando, along with catcher Gene Tennants, were cornerstones of the Oakland Athletics dynasty that won three championships in a row between 1972 and 1974. Tennants especially contributed in the 1972 World Series. Despite only hitting five home runs in the regular season, he hit four home runs and knocked in nine of Oakland's 16 total runs in the entire series, securing World Series MVP honors. Center fielder Rick Monday was traded from the Oakland A's the year before their championship run began. However, he had the longest career of the three at 19 years, and he made two All-Star games. But he's probably most known for keeping an American flag from being burned by protesters in 1976. Number three is the 1989 Cleveland Indians. The highlight of this draft for Cleveland was Jim Tomei, who finished with 612 home runs, 337 of them with Cleveland, and eventually made his way to Cooperstown. They also drafted outfielder and two-time All-Star Brian Giles. What sets this draft class apart from the others on this list is there were six other players outside of Tomei and Giles that had a positive career war. Curtis Laskanik, Jerry Depoto, Robert Person, Alan Embry, Jesse Levis, and Bill Wirtz. While none of those six are stars in their own right, add up their careers and it's an additional 26.9 war for this draft class. When you're already starting with Tomei and Giles, that's enough to take you from fringe top 10 to number 3 overall. Number 2 is the 1984 Chicago Cubs. This can be summed up at two names, Maddox and Moyer. Maddox is not only one of the best control pitchers ever in the league, he's up there in the conversation for greatest pitcher that's ever pitched. An unprecedented 18 gold gloves, four Cy Youngs, and four ERA titles, as well as a plaque in the Hall of Fame. Moyer, on the other hand, was never one of the best pitchers in the league, but he just played forever. He was pitching with Colorado at age 49. Maddox and Moyer combined played for 48 seasons in the league. That's longevity you won't find with any other duo of drafted players. If you know your career wins above replacement leaderboard, the number one spot should be easy to guess. It's the 1985 Pirates. While most of the draft classes on this list had multiple players to list, the 1985 Pirates was simply just Barry Bonds. 
he was that good that by himself, his career wins above replacement were higher than any draft by any team in the history of the game. He's also the reason why we're going to have additional top 10 lists here. After adding up all the numbers, it just didn't feel right that one player would dictate who would take the number one spot. Especially someone that spent most of their career not on the team that drafted them. For that reason, our next ranking will be drafts sorted by war accumulated on the drafting team. There will be some overlap from the career wins above replacement list. And since I already covered all those teams in detail, when they come up, we'll just mention them briefly. Coming in at number 10 is our first repeat in the 1990 Yankees. They came in at number 9 on the previous rankings. The only thing to note is that while Jorge Posada is number 1 on this list, Andy Pettit did come back to the Yankees as a free agent later in his career, but for this ranking we're only looking at the first run with the team, since a free agent signing is an unrelated transaction to the draft. Number 9 is also from 1990, the 1990 Atlanta Braves. Chipper Jones was a Brave for his entire 19-year career, where he was selected to eight All-Star games, won two Silver Sluggers, won an MVP, and aged gracefully winning a batting title in 2008 at the age of 36. He's one of the best switch hitters in Major League Baseball history, ranking only second behind Eddie Murray for career RBIs, as well as the only switch hitter with a career batting average over 300 with at least 400 home runs. Upon his retirement, the Braves retired Chipper's number 10, and in 2018 he was inducted as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Number 8 is the 1975 Detroit Tigers. Star second baseman Lou Whitaker was taken in the fifth round. We've already discussed shortstop Alan Trammell who was taken in the Detroit Tigers 1976 draft, but Whitaker and Trammell were both called up and debuted on the same date in 1977. For the next 19 years, they both manned second base and shortstop for the Tigers, becoming the longest running double play combination in history. Whitaker won Rookie of the Year in 1978, and for his career went to five All-Star games, won four Silver Sluggers, and three Gold Gloves. Unfortunately, Whitaker only received 2.9% of the votes his first year eligible for the Hall of Fame and was removed from the ballot. He's received consideration by the Modern Baseball Era Committee, but has yet to reach the 75% threshold for induction. First baseman Jason Thompson spent five years on the Tigers and went to two All-Star games. He earned the nickname Rooftop for his ability to hit balls onto the Tigers Stadium right field roof. Number seven is another repeat with the 1999 St. Louis Cardinals. They were number eight on the previous list. Same with number six, the 1965 Kansas City Athletics. They came in fourth on the career war ranking. Number five is the 1971 Kansas City Royals. George Brett spent all 21 years of his career on the Royals and is the only player to win batting titles across three different decades, hitting 333 in 1976, 390 in 1980, and 329 in 1990. He was also MVP in that 1980 season, where he had an OPS plus of 203. He's considered one of the all-time best third basemen, with Bill James only ranking Mike Schmidt higher. He's one of only four players to accumulate 3,000 hits, 300 home runs, and a career 300 batting average. He was a 13-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, and a one-time Gold Glove winner, and led the Royals to a World Series win in 1985. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year eligible in 1999 with 98.2% of the vote, and is one of only three numbers retired in Royals history. Number four is the 1976 Red Sox who came in at number seven on the previous list. Number three is the 1971 Philadelphia Phillies. We just discussed George Brett as the 1980 AL MVP and number two third baseman of all time, and here we have Mike Schmidt as the 1980 NL MVP and number one third baseman of all time. Just like Brett, Schmidt spent his entire career on the team that drafted him, playing with Philadelphia for 18 years. Along with 1980, he won MVP in 1981 and 1986. He had a total of 548 career home runs and led the National League in home runs eight times. And the Sporting News named him Player of the Decade of the 1980s. And Baseball Reference ranks his mustache as the sixth best in history. He totaled 12 All-Star games, 10 gold gloves, and six silver sluggers. And his number 20 was retired by the Phillies. He made the Hall of Fame on his first year of eligibility with 96.52% of the vote. Number two is another repeat with the 1978 Baltimore Orioles. They were number 10 on the last list. And number one is again the 1976 Detroit Tigers, who showed up as number six on the previous list. This means that both the 1975 and 1976 Tigers draft class are on this list, with their one-two punch of Whitaker and Trammell. With two rankings down, I'm still not sure that they're the best way to rank draft class. 
First of all, we're only looking at career accumulated stats, so we haven't seen any draft class in the last 20 years. Secondly, the lists are still dominated by first ballot Hall of Famers and not much else. And third, even when looking at drafted team war, that still includes contract extensions and other transactions that are not related to the draft. When analyzing a free agent signing in retrospect, you only look at that player's production during the course of that contract. When drafting, a team is securing that player's first six years of service time per the Major League Baseball labor agreements. When trading a prospect, they're trading the perceived value during those six years as well. So this brings us to our third and my personally favorite ranking, draft class ranked by the wins above replacement of its players during their first six years of Major League service time. Like the previous list, if there are any repeats that we've covered before, we'll go through them briefly. Which brings us to our first repeat, number 10, the 1990 Yankees. This draft appeared on all three lists, coming in at number 9 on Total Career War and number 10 on Team Accumulated War. Number 9 is our first draft class in this century, the 2009 Arizona Diamondbacks. First baseman Paul Goldschmidt was drafted in the 8th round and debuted only two years later in 2011. The team intended to have him on the short side of a platoon with Xavier Nady, but after Nady broke his wrist, Goldschmidt entered the everyday lineup and never looked back. He was an all-star for six years in a row from 2013 to 2018 and finished runner-up in NL MVP in both 2013 to Andrew McCutcheon and 2015 to Bryce Harper. He's been a silver slugger four times and has won three gold gloves. While the Diamondbacks did sign him to a seven-year extension, prior to the 2019 season as the team was rebuilding, they traded him to the St. Louis Cardinals, where he plays today. Center fielder A.J. Pollock was an all-star and gold glove winner in 2015 with the Diamondbacks, and at the end of his team control years signed as a free agent with the Dodgers. After starting two years with the Diamondbacks, Chase Anderson was traded to the Brewers and later signed as a free agent with both Toronto and Philadelphia. He is currently on the Phillies today. Keon Broxton hasn't played in the majors since 2019, but was still able to put up 3.6 war, mostly on the strength of his defense. Number 8 is the 2000 Expos. The three main producers of Grady Sizemore, Jason Bay, and Cliff Lee never played a game for the Expos Nationals franchise. Cliff Lee and Grady Sizemore were both traded to the Indians prior to their debut, and Jason Bay was involved in two trades before finally making it to the Pirates. Grady Sizemore debuted for Cleveland in 2004, and in his four first full seasons made the All-Star team three times, including leading the league in runs in 2006. Unfortunately, due to injuries, his production fell off a cliff at only the age of 26. Prior to his age 27 season, he played in 788 career games with a 124 OPS+, while the rest of his career only saw him play 313 games across four teams with an 85 OPS+. Left fielder Jason Bay won Rookie of the Year in 2004 with Pittsburgh, going to All-Star Games in 2005, 2006, and 2009. His production stayed at a high level through his age 30 season, but after signing a three-year deal with the New York Mets at the age of 31, like Sizemore, his production fell off a cliff, accumulating only 2.3 war after the age of 30. Cliff Lee, on the other hand, remained productive going to three All-Star Games after the age of 30. He went to four All-Star Games total and won a Cy Young Award in 2008 with the Indians. That year also saw him win his only ERA title. He pitched in two World Series, both in 2009 with Philadelphia and 2010 with Texas. Number seven is the 1989 Boston Red Sox. Unfortunately for the Red Sox, they traded Hall of Famer Jeff Bagwell as a prospect in 1990 for 15 relief appearances of Larry Anderson. Bagwell made his debut for Houston on opening day the next season and never looked back. He won Rookie of the Year that season and later won MVP in 1994. He played his entire 15-year career with Houston, where he was a core member of the Killer Bees with Craig Biggio. Other members included Derek Bell, Sean Barry, Lance Berkman, Carlos Beltran, and Chris Burke. He went to four All-Star games, won three Silver Sluggers, and was awarded one Gold Glove. First baseman Mo Vaughn did stay with Boston, also debuting in 1991. He won the MVP in 1995, where he led the league with 126 RBIs. He was a three-time All-Star, all with Boston, and near the end of his career also played for the Angels and Mets. He had five consecutive seasons with the Red Sox with a batting average of over 300, and hit 230 of his career 328 home runs with the team. Number six is the 1989 Minnesota Twins. Second baseman Chuck Knobloch started this draft off with a bang, 
winning Rookie of the Year in 1991. He was one of the most prolific base stealers in the 90s, having three straight seasons of over 40 steals. He stole 407 bases in his 12-year career. He went to four All-Star games, won two Silver Sluggers, as well as one Gold Glove. However, he developed the yips as a Yankee in 2000, having 15 errors in just 82 games at second, and was transitioned a designated hitter for the rest of the season. He never got over his throwing issues at second base and was moved to left field the last two years of his career. Pitcher Scott Erickson also got off to a fast start in his career, finishing second in the Cy Young Award voting in his first full season in 1991. Erickson was a prolific ground ball pitcher, leading the league five times in double plays. He played for 15 seasons, although was hampered by injuries near the end of his career, missing all of the 2001 season due to an elbow injury and all of the 2003 season due to a torn labrum. Danny Nagel played for six teams in his 13-year career, going to two All-Star games and finishing top 10 in the Cy Young Award voting twice. After the 2004 season, he was ticketed by a Colorado police officer for soliciting a woman for oral sex, ending both his career and his marriage prematurely. Left fielder Marty Cordova was the last to debut for this draft, but still entered the league with the bang, winning Rookie of the Year in 1995. He followed that up with his best season in 1996, batting 309 with 111 RBIs. His career stalled after that due to back injuries. Between 1997 and 2000, he missed 240 games while on the injured list. Mike Trombley was a bulk relief pitcher, appearing in over 65 games each season from 1997 to 2001. He played for 11 years total, 9 with Minnesota. Number 5 is another appearance by the 1976 Red Sox. This draft was number 6 on the career war list and number 4 on the team war list. Number 4 is the 1989 Indians, who were number 3 on the career war list. Number 3 is our last repeat with the 1965 Kansas City Athletics. They appeared at number four on the career war rankings and fifth on the team war rankings. Number two is the most recent draft class to appear on any of these rankings, the 2011 Red Sox. This also marks the fourth Red Sox draft to appear on these lists. Boston's fifth round pick, outfielder Mookie Betts, is the clear star of this draft, having received MVP votes in each of his first six full seasons, winning MVP in 2018. That year he became the first player in history to win the MVP, Silver Slugger, Gold Glove, Batting Title, and a World Series ring in the same season. Overall, he's won five Gold Gloves, been an All-Star four times, and won four Silver Sluggers. Mookie is also a professional bowler and has bowled a perfect game in official competition. Jackie Bradley Jr. is known for his great glove in center field, having won a Gold Glove in 2018. He was an All-Star in 2016, and was named Most Valuable Player of the ALCS in 2018. He is currently on his first year of a two-year deal with the Milwaukee Brewers. Third baseman Travis Shaw is also on the Brewers, where he had 30 home run seasons in 2017 and 2018. He has one of the best nicknames in baseball, known as the Mayor of Ding Dong City. Unfortunately, his hitting ability and home run prowess seemingly disappeared in 2019 at the age of 29, and he's only hit 19 home runs over the last three seasons, with an OPS plus of just 66. Relief pitcher Matt Barnes is still on the Red Sox and currently serves as the team's closer. He's still in his fifth year of service time, so any war he accumulates in 2021 will be added to this total. To add, Betts, Bradley, Shaw, and Barnes were all full-time starters in 2020 and still within their six years of service time. Because of the shortened season, this draft doesn't nearly have as much war as it possibly could have. Extrapolating their 2020 stats to a full season would have meant this draft reaching 89 wins above replacement, which would have put it ahead of our number one draft, the 2009 Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. This shouldn't come as a surprise, but Mike Trout has more wins above replacement in his first six years of service time than any player ever drafted. He's currently on pace to be Inner Circle Hall of Famer and possibly in the conversation for greatest of all time. The only thing that can slow him down at this point is injuries, as he hasn't started over 140 games since 2016. He's still under the age of 30, yet he's been to eight All-Star games, won eight Silver Sluggers, and three MVP awards. Although there's some strong arguments that he should have won four, possibly five. The Angels have already signed him to an extension through his age 38 season, so there's still plenty of time for him to win a few more. Funny enough, Trout was the first player to attend the draft in person, as the 2009 draft was the first televised on MLB Network. Trout being this good isn't surprising, but what is surprising is even if you take Trout out, the rest of this draft still finishes in the 70th percentile. 
Outfielder Randall Grichuk already has 147 home runs in his career. Starting pitcher Patrick Corbin has been to two All-Star games and received Cy Young votes in two different seasons. Garrett Richards has been hampered by injuries, but still put together some plus seasons as a starter in 2014 and 2015. And Tyler Skaggs was blooming into a middle of the rotation starter until his untimely death in 2019. Well, that's the end of all of our lists. As a reminder, all of the compiled data is available in a link in the description. There's a few surprises and trends that may make it into future videos. For instance, the 2009, 2010, and 2011 drafts all finished in the top seven drafts of all time by Service Time War. Or see how draft classes from 2012 to today have held up so far. With the season currently in progress and the numbers continuing to change, I'll most likely update the data at the end of the year. If you've made it this far, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.